Hey fellas, how you doing? It's Suko, and as you can see, if you watched our last unboxing video, I didn't move the desk. I'm still planning to. Got a little lazy though, but I swear next time. Anyway, what that means is that we'll be using this desk for another unboxing video, the last unboxing haul for 2023. It's been a stacked year of collecting as far as I'm concerned, and I would love to talk about it some more another time, but I got another group of figures to share with you guys that I'm pretty excited to get into. And you know what? No lengthy intro this time. I want to make sure this video comes out before 2023 ends. So let's get started. Okay, so first up, let's get a little cultured. I could not stop the degenerate side of me this time around. So I picked up MX Chan from Max Factory. Insanely overpriced figure though, exclusively selling for around 29,000 yen and is already discounted on Amiyami's pre-owned section. Gee, I wonder why. Bought it from Good Smile Company Global with flat rate shipping and an insanely favorable exchange rate, however, so $218 is what I paid, which really isn't that bad to me. Most figures these days, unfortunately, cost that much. So as for her box, am I the only one who thinks of like a magazine cover when I look at it? The photo chosen, the gold foil name up top, the little blurbs detailing the figure, almost like an advertisement. It's like a pinup cover or something, I, I do dig it. You know, a lot of people were actually complaining about the weights of MX Sean. Like, this figure is way too light as far as PVC scale figures go. But after assembling her, I have no idea what they're talking about. I feel like this is the exact weight I expected from this figure. With the only exception really being the base. It does feel flimsy, it's very thin, and I fear it might slide around a little bit if you're not careful. However, she is very sturdy, like there is not much wobble to this figure, and the metal pegs are huge. So I don't think there's anything to really worry about as far as like the stability goes. The box on the other hand is actually the cheapest cardboard on this planet, I guarantee you that. I don't know why they cheap out so hard and I get it it's just a box but it feels so flimsy that even holding it makes it feel like I'm gonna bend it or crease it or something so I'm gonna stop so yeah Tori Domino the artist behind this design has been terrorizing the industry for the last few years with his voluptuous and curvy character designs I think they might have also changed the definition of the word terrorizing but needless to say the man knows what he likes this time around however with MX Sean he didn't really have to hold back because this is an OC She's not featured in a game or an anime. In fact, I'm not sure why they made this design because I haven't seen her used anywhere else besides this figure. But regardless, her proportions are some of his thickest yet. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't like that. I also really like how muscular her legs are, which caught my eye the moment I saw this figure. I'm not gonna lie, that feature was probably the final nail in the pre-order coffin for me. But there's also just this funny juxtaposition to it all. She is so busty, her butt and thighs are so curvy, the stomach is so defined, so much emphasis is put on her body, and then her face has this extreme cutesiness to it, like she's got a flesh fang of all things, it throws me off so hard. But let me just say while I'm here, her eyes look fantastic. There's a roughness to them, which leans into a hand-drawn style, which is super appealing to me. While I can't really tell you exactly why she's dressed the way she is, there's definitely a sportiness to her overall design that you might have picked up on. It's more of a vibe than anything else, the pose that makes it look like she might have been working out recently, the sunglasses and long hair tied up in a ponytail, the sleeveless leotard hoodie and fingerless gloves. You know, I think it makes sense, right? There's a theme overall here, as long as you ignore the high heels down there, but I can't really explain that. I'm trying my best. What I can tell you with full confidence, however, is that her paint job is exceptionally well done. One of Max Factory's best, no exaggeration. The shading of her hair, the supple skin tone, the luxurious gold, that glossy sheer material running through her chest and stomach, the colors are as appealing as they get. The multitude of finishes cast the eye, and man, the sculpt, like I said earlier, just does not know when to stop. Even ignoring all the obvious charm points, right? That smooth flow of her ponytail, the realistic creasing of her hoodie and sleeves, that definition of her leg muscles, right? It's impressive without a doubt. And then you add in everything else, and I'm starting to understand why they thought they could get away with that price tag. The quality speaks for itself. The only issues I have with this figure are so minor that I might as well not even bring them up, but the gold used for the base and case look kind of cheap in comparison to the gold throughout the outfit, but that's kind of it. I'm not even sure what's in that case, but its inclusion is definitely welcome. How she's leaning against it kind of complements the sporty nature, and that looseness of the strap kind of tricks your brain into thinking it's like a flexible pleather. 
I would like to formally apologize for setting back the male figure movement by buying this figure. I know I'm literally feeding into why we don't get more male figures, but it's kind of amazing, what could I say? And also, like I mentioned earlier, this figure is dropping in price, so if you like OC characters and thicker character designs, then I would highly recommend this one. Easy recommendation. Next up, a series of mistakes, but a hole in my collection has now been filled. Boy, do I feel dumb thinking back to this one, but here we have Max Factory's Shuten Doji. Now, if you know me, you might be thinking, Zuko, why'd you buy this? You already have both of Q's Q's figures. And to that, I say, I just can't help it. I am down bad. I just want to buy all of her figures, all right? But man, this figure was such a headache to get. Okay, so for this part of the video, I more so want to talk about how I got this Shuten Doji figure, but I have a feeling this story is going to take a couple of minutes, so feel free to skip it. If you don't care, I won't be offended, but after the fact, I will talk about how I feel about the figure overall. But anyway, for whatever reason, this Shuten Doji figure is a solid chunk of change more if you want to import it, and you're better off finding the figure locally. The only problem is you have to wait for the right price, like someone will eventually give you a good deal, but it doesn't happen too often. Well, one day I find her for $130 on my figure collection, which is a steal of a deal, have to jump on that one. But unfortunately, when I got the figure, there were some problems with it, a bit more, say, damage than I was expecting. Miscommunication on both of our parts, but the seller was very nice the entire way through, and they allowed me to return her hassle-free. Very appreciative of that. After the fact, I found someone else selling the figure on my figure collection for $170 new. Now, that's a little bit more than I want to spend. It's a good price, but the figure's old at this point, and I've always thought that this was the lesser of the three scale figures on the market right now of this character. However, I contact the seller, start talking to them, very nice as well, willing to go down to 160 because I guess they've been holding it for a little bit. However, in my eagerness to pick up a new figure of her, I still had to return the original one, and I wanted to get my money back before I spent more. So I tell them about the situation, I'll be in touch, right? You don't have to hold the figure for me or anything, but right now I'm not really comfortable making any more purchases, and they're cool with that. So we leave it at that. But at this point, Black Friday is approaching, and I have plans to make some pretty decently sized purchases, right? And if I do that, I probably shouldn't also buy this extra Shuten Doji figure. So I waited out a little bit, like an extra week or two, and Animate Sale comes. Now this was the sale I was waiting for, because last year they did free shipping, and the stars were aligning. They had two figures I was really, really excited to get from them. They had the new Shuten Doji figure, which looks gigantic, and the Aegis figure from Persona 3. Unfortunately, they only did 50% shipping, which sounds good, but their shipping prices are so bloated that even at half off, those figures would have cost me at least 10,000 yen to ship. And at that point, it's like, I might as well wait and not drop all of this money right now. So the next day comes, and I just kind of have like that brain blast, oh shit, I forgot about the Shuten Doji, because it's been a couple of days or weeks at this point. And I contact the guy, and I'm like, hey, I'm willing to buy this figure now if you still have it. Might as well, since I didn't buy anything else, right? And they get back to me and they say, sorry, but I just sold it yesterday. And let me tell you, that stings so much more than if it was a week prior. My fault completely, but one day. Amazing, lesson learned, right? Just buy everything you want immediately. What a craptastic Black Friday event that was. I was deflated at that point. I was feeling like Luffy's hat during the Macy's Day Parade. Why did that have to happen? It was his first time and he got popped by the tree. Anyway, the end of the story, I'm sad. I go on Mandarake. Randomly, they have one for 17,000 yen, which is way lower than it typically is, normally around like 23,000 from what I've gathered. So I'm like, screw it, I'm buying this figure. After shipping, it ended up being $160 anyway. So I got the same price, but it was used instead of new. 12 years into this hobby, and I still have no idea what the hell I'm doing. So was she worth it? Well, I'm definitely happy with her, but I've noticed two problems right off the bat. One, the sake out of her bowl has just fallen out. I never knew that the sake was actually like a sticker that can unstick over time. Why design it this way? It just feels like cutting corners. They do give you two additional sake servings, but that just seems like a band-aid solution to a bigger problem. I might just leave it off for now. The other issue is that there seems to be silver paint transfer on her knee, which is odd because I don't know how that would happen. 
The Shuten Doji figure seems hard to maintain over time, which is why I have her on bubble wrap. It's very easy to scuff up her legs and chip off the gold paint on the gourd. The gourd can also have trouble staying in her hand, and the extra Oni knee guard is just asking to get lost. It's so small. These are reasons why I never wanted to pay too much for her. The figure just feels inherently flawed to an extent that can make her value diminish as she starts to show signs of wear. Despite all of that though, I really do quite like this version of her. While all of her figures have this say alert to them for one reason or another, this one to me captures the spirit of her personality the best. Drinking sake is the first thing that comes to mind when I think of her, so having this side of her in figure form feels like a necessity for a Shuten Doji fan. While I do have issues with the way she's set up, I can't really say the same for her overall sculpt and paint job. It's not Max Factory's best, but everything from the metallic paint of her armor to her vivid purple hair looks outstanding. Her face is equally as good as any of Q's Q Shuten Doji figures, and her glossy horns bring familiar gradients that you'll enjoy if you're a fan of the character. Something about the clear blue and gold gourd really completes this figure too. From a color standpoint, the figure easily wins you over. Also, it wouldn't be a Shuten Doji figure without a tasteful degree of fan service. Well, as tasteful as her butt basically just being fully out can be, but everything else, right, from her thighs and her half-worn kimono revealing her shoulders, backs up that idea. For me, I don't think this could beat either of the other two Shuten Doji figures I have, nor will it beat the new one coming out next year. But as far as an addition to my growing collection of Shuten Doji figures go, it's a welcome one. To be honest, I might try and find this figure again new just so I could have a cleaner copy of it, but for now, I'm definitely satisfied. So yeah, Black Friday was a little weird for me. I did at the end of it all end up buying three figures, but one isn't here yet, and one I actually needed to return for a replacement, so we'll talk about all of that at another time. However, I did end up getting a couple of extra things that I could share with you now. Not something I buy super often, but Wyo Records, Wayo Records, I'm actually not sure how you pronounce their name, they were doing a sale on some soundtracks, and while I'm not a vinyl guy, I am willing to buy some soundtrack CDs if they're the right price. For instance, Skies of Arcadia. Now, truthfully, haven't played this yet. This is one of my girlfriend's favorite games, and it was really cheap, like 15 bucks. So I picked it up, gift for her, I'll give it to her next time I see her. And I'll play that eventually, but haven't had the time, hopefully next year. Next up though, Yeez 8, banger soundtrack, amazing game as well. Very excited that both of these two characters are randomly getting figures, Adol and Donna, uh, from Kotobukiya. And then last up, we had Grandia 2, which I had the pleasure of playing like two months ago. Now for whatever reason, I also had the foresight to buy Grandia 1 soundtrack back in the day, like this isn't a new purchase. I've had this for years, just assuming I would like this game, and I also really like the art style of this one. But uh, yeah, I think it was a good decision because after playing both of these during October, November, I kind of fell in love. It's so funny to me to see how different in tone these two games are. Grandia 1 offering like the purest sense of adventure, such a charming, whimsical game full of lovable characters and a simple but pretty engaging coming of age story. And Grandia 2, a much darker narrative that doesn't really pull its punches. The character writing and voice acting are vastly improved too. Also forgot to mention that I got these two Shikishi boards, one for Grandia 2 and one for Yeez 8. I love little stuff like this. Unfortunately, didn't get the one for Grandia 1, but that was very limited back a couple years ago. And even though I bought that like right away, I missed out, which kind of sucks, but at least I got these and they're very nice looking. My other Black Friday pickup I could share with you guys is so goddamn cool if you ask me, and I was just super thrilled that I finally found an opportunity to buy some of these figures. In fact, I don't even know where the box is. I had to open them up and check for damage because these are actually purchases from Etsy. So these two figures were designed by an artist known as Cosmic Art. If I said their name wrong, I apologize, but I'm gonna be linking their website in the description down below if you wanna check them out. They specialize in Earthbound and Mother-related figures, and I adore the series, so I've always been keeping an eye on his designs. So during Black Friday, he was doing a 25% off sale, like site-wide. And while I was spending a lot of money at the time, I didn't get to indulge as much as I wanted to, but I was still very interested in checking out some of his figures. So I decided to pick up the department store Alien and a Starman Deluxe, the gold version. Not only were they a bit bigger than I was expecting, but I'm genuinely impressed at how clean they are sculpt wise. The alien is so smug. He kind of gave him like a double chin, which is really fun to me. And Starmen are just cool, dude, like peak enemy design. And I love the way he looks here. These figures also fit in perfectly with the Bandai set of Earthbound figures released quite a while ago. 
and I've had these for a very long time and I adore them. So that's probably the best compliment I could give, just adding really nice figures to my Earthbound set. What more could I possibly want? So yeah, needless to say, I am definitely buying more of these in the future. And when that happens, I'll be sure to share it with you guys on this channel. For our last few figures today, we're once again going to be borrowing from my girlfriend and we're gonna end on a bang. But before that, let's check out this figure. Kaide from Danganronpa V3, made by Fat Company and was pretty expensive if I recall, around 27,000 yen before discounts. Man, I haven't played this game in ages, but you know what? Kaide was a pretty good character. I liked her quite a bit. Unfortunately, this game is very controversial and it's impossible to talk about without spoiling something. So we're not gonna go there today. The box design is pretty solid if you ask me. There's lots of images of the figures circling it and they have these like asymmetrical window cutouts to reference the panels often used in the game. I like that. The size is about what you would expect, not too big, but definitely leaves enough of a footprint. The assembly for Kaide is pretty tedious if you ask me. Not the worst, but there's lots of pegs for these musical sheets that you have to deal with and it's pretty hard to get them in flush without struggling. The shoe and the backpack pegs were probably the worst for me. There's really not much to worry about with Kaide and Monokuma though. And let me just say, it's really nice to see Monokuma back and all dressed up as a conductor. It's very cute. Thematically, this is probably Fat Company's best efforts, honing in on the fact that Kaide is the ultimate pianist. The musical sheets are annoying for sure, but the chaotic mess of papers flying throughout the figure definitely adds some nice dynamism to it. And the bass being a slew of piano keys that are being pressed down by their feet completes the musical theming. Finish it off with some gold and dark roses for a little bit of fanciness and you got yourself a real nice setup. They've even weathered the edges a little bit of the space, which is a really nice touch. As is usual with Fat Company, the paint job's all right. The pink sweater looks cute for sure, and her light blonde hair has some slightly dark shading throughout. The purple skirt with the musical notes look great. Just a strong design element of the character if you ask me. But just like Kasumi from last time, they got a little lazy with that decal application. So now this is just a trend within the company, which is not great. Her face also looks quite good to me. The expression, the eye design. I'd say I like this a bit more than Junko's bunny when it comes to matching Danganronpa's art style. And since we've got a more dynamic setup here, the added movement has given her sweater a healthy amount of creases and the skirt a nice little flow. Monokuma is basically perfect. I really like how they painted his eye metallic red. I'm not sure if the other figures have that, like the Kirigiri one, but I think it adds a lot here. Another cool detail is in the musical sheets. The printing is super clean and readable that I wouldn't be surprised if this actually features the song Claire de Luna in its entirety. The song does have some significance to the game, of course, but it also reminds me of Moon as the song is in that game as well. So I, I just like this song a lot. And I think this is a very neat detail that they could have completely skipped over and just kind of scribbled on the papers if they wanted to, but you'll love to see this kind of detail. So you know what? A little tedious, but I feel like there's very little to actually complain about with this figure. It's not brilliant by any means, of course, but I do think it's solid. It fits the series style well, and it's just a fun looking figure to look at in general. So if you're a fan of Danganronpa, I think you'd be happy with this. Um, the only other thing of note that I kind of realized is that she's very light, and I feel like that kind of caught me off guard considering there's like a piano key bass and two characters here, but I don't know. Does that really matter that much? Probably not. All right, last up. I'm sure many people talked about this one already, but hey, now it's my turn. Kurisu from Steins Gate by Good Smile Company, the Reading Steiner version. Retailing for around 35,000 yen, which is not cheap at all, but based on the design alone, there was reason to believe that this would be the definitive must-get Kurisu figure. Kudos to them for not making this box gigantic, by the way. I expected much worse. Also, you know you're in for a treat when Good Smile Company or Max Factory breaks out the really nice cardboard and the cake box style. Assembly for this is almost non-existent, bless them for that. All you really do is plug your feet into the base and then there's this little extra peg on her hair to kind of connect it to one of the monitors. I'm not really the biggest fan of that. In fact, I didn't push it down all the way because I got to box this one up later, but it's really thin and it feels like this would be a part of the figure that would break if you're not careful. It goes without saying, but the base is the star of the show. It's really what you're paying for here. So let's just take a look at Kurisu first. If the pose is looking familiar, it's due to the fact that this figure is based off art done by Huke himself. 
though with slight modifications to have Kurisu lean against a literal tower of electronics. Considering she's no longer surrounded by them in like a small enclosure, I think it was a great call. It makes her look a little bit cooler too if you ask me. Further enforced by the rest of her pose, she's gripping her right arm, she's running her hand through her hair, and you can only see one of her eyes. It's a stellar setup if you ask me, and it looks exactly like her too. Not to mention, they painted her hair perfectly, a lovely mix of orange and brown tones. One thing though that I'm slightly disappointed by, like just a little bit, is her jacket. The final product seems to have a bit of a shininess to it. I'm not sure what type of material or fabric they're trying to imply her jacket is made of, but this choice just makes her sculpt look a tad cheaper as a result. Thankfully, the rest of the outfit is totally on point, with her leggings of course standing out the most. Excellent gradation and a hint of sheen just enhances those slender legs that you've come to love. If I'm being honest, the strength of this pose is enough to carry this figure for me, assuming they adjust the price of course. I frankly love the way it looks. However, the base really is something special here. A chaotic mess of monitors, computers, disk drives, and references to the show that you'll quickly notice as you break it down. Different divergence numbers are displayed on various monitors, along with the divergence meter perched on the bottom monitor here. The phone wave time machine sits off to the side, and how could you forget the Metalupa, or sorry, rather, Metalupa! What really sells this skull for me though is all the wires scattered throughout. Outlet plugs, surge protectors, mice, display cables. Some of the wires even hang off of the base, which is cool. Like, there's so much packed into this structure that it literally can't contain it all. Most Steins Gate figures are pretty good about referencing the series through like gears and divergence numbers, but never to this degree. They really got the retro aesthetic down for the electronics. Everything just looks so dated and worn down, and that's exactly how it should be. Even the floorboards look rickety and show their age. This is just one of those figures where no matter how you display her, you're never going to be able to appreciate everything at once. There's just as much detail on the back of the figure as there is the front. You'll be tempted to rotate her every now and then just to marvel at the craftsmanship. I also want to say that there's almost like a frozen in time aspect to this base, as the way these electronics are stacked up on top of each other surely wouldn't hold. It's visually much more pleasing that they're all crammed on top of each other and tilted at various angles. I wouldn't have it any other way, but I wanted to bring it up as it's kind of part of the chaos. I really do wonder though what they're making these figures out of these days, obviously PVC and whatnot. However, this figure is very light, very surprising to me. You lift this figure up, it's like lighter than the Shuten Doji figure despite so much more going on, and it also feels kind of brittle especially the wires and some of the smaller pieces, so you should probably be very careful when handling this one, even though for me she's not a wobbler, she's very sturdy, but the individual parts feel like they could be very brittle, so be careful. But outside of that and the jacket's finish, this figure's an absolute stunner. We've gotten a ton of Kurisu figures over the years, and trust me, we'll be getting more soon. In fact, a new one's on the horizon as we speak. But will we ever get another figure of her that defines the character and the series as well as this one does? I kind of struggle to think of how that could even be possible. Conceptually, this is just way too good of an idea, and Good Smile Company did an excellent job bringing Kurisu to life. There we have it though, the last video of 2023. It's been fun, and I think I ended on a strong note. So, thank you for joining me for another year of figures and ramblings, and hopefully 2024 will be just as good. I'll be back next year with the last pre-order roundup for 2023, but please forgive me if I'm a little late this time, as the holidays are quickly approaching. Though this video is probably going up after Christmas, so I don't know how this is going to work. Either way, I hope you enjoy your holidays, and I'll see you guys very soon. Later.